Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, Fractional CTO from Virtual Elephant Consulting. And in this video, we are going to deep dive into how to set up an enterprise architecture or EA practice within your organizations. As a CTO, CIO, or other senior leader, you know how crucial it is to be able to formulate your strategy and then be able to have a practice in place to execute it. In this video, I'm going to review with you the 10-step process to setting up an EA practice within your organizations. Let's get started. As we dive into the 10-step process for an establishing an enterprise architecture practice within your organizations, it's going to be crucial on you as a senior leader, CTO, or CIO to be able to articulate out to your stakeholders why it is going to be so crucial from a business perspective. And when we think about establishing an EA practice within our organizations, there are really three key benefits that we typically key in on. The first is the ability to improve our decision-making process across our organizations, both between our IT and our engineering teams. Second, we want to be able to optimize our IT and cloud assets, and having a structured EA practice should help you accomplish just that. And then finally, we want to make sure that we are able to enhance our business agility. Again, everything comes down to being able to execute, and that's what we're going to be judged on. That's how we're going to be able to determine our ROI within our investments for all of these digital transformation initiatives that we're trying to undertake in 2024 and beyond. The first step is establishing a clear vision and purpose. As a CTO or CIO, I want to make sure that I'm establishing what my vision is and why I want to be creating an EA practice within our organizations. The reality is the vast majority of digital transformation and cloud transformation projects that we as CTOs and CIOs undertake fail because we lack the ability to be able to establish frameworks within our organizations to be able to streamline our success. And the key thing about establishing an EA practice is that it's going to help us be able to marry the vision that we've set forth within our digital transformations and bring it together with the strategic implementation of those initiatives within our organizations. And so we want to be able to establish an EA practice to be able to bring together both our engineering and our IT assets, stakeholders, and team members to be able to work towards a common goal. And that's what we want to set forth here in step one. Now, step two is making sure that we have executive sponsorship and buy-in. And this is going to be so crucial because oftentimes when we do not have that executive sponsorship that we need, either from our CEO or from our board of directors, it's going to doom an initiative from the get-go. And so making sure that we have that executive sponsorship is going to help our EA board and our board members that we establish within that board be able to make sure that they are working towards a common set of goals that are in alignment with all of the business strategic objectives. And this is going to help us make sure that in the long term that we are going to be successful. Again, as I've talked about before, one of the things that we need to make sure that we're doing as CTOs and CIOs is that we have a vision that's going to stretch out multiple years. And any digital transformation project really is going to take anywhere between three and five years. And you've heard me say this before. And one of the things that we want to make sure that we do from the beginning is establish this EA practice to be able to enhance our chances, to be able to enhance our ability to succeed within our digital transformation initiatives. So now that we've set a clear vision and we've gotten buy-in from our stakeholders, step three is really about defining and choosing an EA framework and methodology that we're going to adopt. Now, I personally recommend TOGAF, and while there are others out there, I have found personally that TOGAF works for the vast majority of organizations that I've worked with over the last five or six years. Now, one of the critical aspects of adopting any framework within our organizations is that we make sure that we customize it for our use cases. And so taking a framework like, like TOGAF is going to enable us and allow us to be able to customize it based on our needs and how our organization is set up. But choosing a framework from the get-go 
getting everyone in alignment with what framework we're going with, and certainly making sure that we are enabling our team members, especially our EA board members, to be able to have fluency within what that framework prescribes and the different processes and steps that it's going to set forth for us is crucial. So once we've chosen this, we want to make sure that we go through and we enable all of our team members that are going to be part of our EA practice. And so step four is all about establishing an EA roadmap. Now, this is going to be all about what our future state vision is going to look like. What do we want our architecture to look like? How do we want our applications to be refactored? What are we trying to get to in the long term from a digital or cloud transformation perspective? And so the first thing that we need to do, and I talked about this last week in my video, is we need to be able to perform a maturity assessment. We need to understand both from a cloud infrastructure perspective, as well as from an, in, an engineering and an application perspective, where we are today. We need to be able to identify our strengths, our weaknesses, and our opportunities. And once we've gone through this assessment, then it's going to be time for us to start looking at what our current action items are going to be, what areas do we want to focus on, and how we are going to create our future state architecture. And this is where our architects, our application, our data, our system, our infrastructure, and our cloud architects are all going to work together with our enterprise architect and be able to come up with the long-term future state architecture that we're going to be driving towards as an organization as part of our digital transformation. Now that we've created our assessment and we understand where we are and we believe we have an understanding of where we want to go with our future state architecture, the next part that we need to do is now we're going to form our EA team. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, this is going to include individuals such as our solutions, our data, our application, our cloud, and our infrastructure architects. And we're going to bring them all together and we're going to come up with this long-term future state architecture that we want to create. And each architect that is part of our EA team is going to work together within the boundaries of their subject matter expertise to be able to help us come up with a solution and a long-term design that is robust, that's aligned to our business objectives, and that we've done our due diligence to gather all of our requirements, our constraints, and where we've identified our risks and figured out what we are going to do to mitigate those risks in the long term so that we can be successful within this digital transformation that we're undergoing. In our role as senior leaders, as CTOs and CIOs now is support. We need to be supporting our EA team to make sure that they have both the time and the resources that they need to be able to go out and accomplish this work to help us be able to realize and marry the vision that we've come up with with the strategic intent and the actual deliverables of a cloud and application architecture that's going to meet the needs of our business long term. Now, step six, our team has started working on the design. And so now what we need to do is we need to establish and create our EA tools and repositories that the team is going to leverage as they work on this future state architecture. And so depending on your organization, this is where a lot of customization is going to come into play. You might already have existing tools that you've leveraged in the past for backing up and for storing your artifact data as part of this EA framework that we're now going to establish. So if you already have these tools, go ahead and keep leveraging them. If you don't have these tools and this is all new to you, this is where you're going to have your EA team come up with the tools that they think that they're going to need to be able to accomplish the task at hand. Now, again, as with everything else, when we're choosing these tools, we want to be quick to be able to make decisions. We don't want to drag out long-term evaluations. We want to pick a tool, see if it works for us, and if it doesn't, ad adapt later on. We can always abandon a tool later on and replace it with something else. But here, as we're establishing this framework for the first time, we want to make sure that we don't get into analysis paralysis. And we want to make sure that we're actually executing in a quick timeline to be able to establish this practice so that we can just start getting working and start getting into the meat of everything that we want to do. This is one of the areas where many organizations get bogged down. They get so hyper-focused on picking the right tool, they decide and they go past the tool that is good enough for now. 
And that's one of the things that I've learned. We want to make sure that when we're choosing tools, we're not looking for the perfect tool. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't exist. And so we want to make, make sure that we pick a tool that meets our base requirements to be able to leverage within our organizations and within our EA framework to make sure that we actually get to doing the actual work that's important. Because remember, picking a tool ultimately isn't going to be the thing that determines our success long-term from a digital transformation perspective. So step seven, now this is all about engagement and communication. So we wanna make sure that our EA board and our EA team, that they're engaging our stakeholders and that they're communicating what they're doing back to the board. So as the EA team is working and executing against the tasks that we've set before them as an EA board, as a CTO or CIO, we want to make sure that they're going back and they're regularly communicating back to the board what they're doing, what they've accomplished, where they're struggling, what roadblocks might they have encountered. And we want to make sure that they're regularly talking to both the board and the stakeholders to make sure that everyone stays in alignment with what we're working on. It's going to be crucial that we overly communicate, especially early on, as we're trying to show the value of establishing this EA practice within our organizations. And the more that we communicate, the more engaged our stakeholders are going to feel. And long term, that's ultimately going to help us with our success. Now, step eight is all about governance and setting standards. Now, any good enterprise architecture framework like TOGAF is going to help us be able to define what the governance model is going to look like. And when we think back around the earlier videos and concepts that I've talked about around the cloud operating model, you'll know how important governance is from a cloud operating model perspective. And so our EA practice and its governance that we set forth within it needs to align with what we're doing within our cloud operating model. All of these things are ultimately going to work together to help us be successful with our digital transformation initiatives. Now, this governance model can take many forms, and it's going to be customized based off of what our business is and the areas in which we operate. But it's going to be important that we make sure that we apply the governance to all of our EA projects that come through the EA board and this EA practice that we're establishing. And that's going to help us make sure that we're successful long term. The more standardization that we can put in place from the get-go as we're establishing this EA practice is going to pay dividends in the long term as we're executing against projects over two, three, four, and even five years. Now the final two steps, steps nine and 10, for me, they really kind of bring everything together. And it's really about what I talk about so much on this channel. So Step nine is all about measuring and improving our EA practice as time goes on. So as we think about the ADM lifecycle that I've talked about in the past that's part of TOGAF and where we're thinking about architecture designs in general, we want to make sure that as we get to certain stages within an EA project that we're going back and we're evaluating both how we delivered against that project as well as how the architecture stacks up to what those business objectives are that we set forth. Now, over time, we know that business priorities are going to change. And so our ability to measure and constantly be improving in what we're doing within our architectures and within our EA practice is going to be crucial. And then the last step, step 10, is really about going through and developing a culture of change within our EA practice, within our organizations, both on the engineering and the IT side. So often we think that just because we've delivered on this project that now we're done and it's going to live that way for a long period of time. And it certainly might, but oftentimes we need to realize that things are going to change, whether it's external factors like markets changing or an economic downturn, or it's internal factors. We've had a change of leadership within our organizations, or we've had a change of direction based off of customer feedback. And so we need our EA practice to help us as CTOs and CIOs, as well as the stakeholders, the EA board, and the EA team members to understand that over time, things are going to change. And so as we're constantly evaluating where we are and going through a EA practice life cycle, we want to make sure that we're making change incrementally based on the changing requirements that we're faced as an organization and as a business. 
And when we implement all 10 of these steps together, this is how we are going to be able to have a successful EA practice established within our organizations, one that's ultimately going to be able to help us be able to deliver that improved decision-making, one that's going to be able to help us optimize our IT and cloud assets because we understand the complete vision of everything that we're doing across engineering and IT to be able to deliver for the business, to be able to deliver for our customers, and ultimately be able to drive a profit. That's really what we're all after in the long run. And then finally, this EA practice, as we've talked about by using these 10 steps, is going to be able to help you as a CTO or CIO be able to realize enhanced business agility within your teams and organizations. And ultimately, that's what this is all about. So often, organizations get bogged down with the minutia of the day-to-day projects. And this EA practice that we establish within our companies should allow us and our team members to be able to take the long vision out and be able to see everything that's out on the horizon for us that we're executing against to make sure that we're all working in lockstep towards a goal. And ultimately, that's what this video is all about, making sure that you can be successful in your digital transformations and that you don't find yourself victim of one of the many failures that Gartner is telling us that organizations are experiencing when they take on a digital transformation project. One of the massive barriers that we've talked about before is the inability of organizations to marry the vision and the strategy with the actual execution. And that's what establishing an EA practice is going to help you solve within your organizations. Now, if you're enjoying this content, please make sure that you subscribe to the Virtual Elephant channel, that you hit that notification button, You hit the like button and you leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video. And certainly make sure that you're joining my upcoming webinar series, which is all about cloud maturity and learning how to assess our cloud maturity within our organizations. I'll give you a assessment program and an assessment process that you can follow within your organizations to be able to drive success, to be able to increase your chances of success with your digital transformation projects. Make sure you check out my website, virtualelephant.com. It's all new and completely redesigned. And if you're looking to have more of a one-on-one with me to be able to discuss what we've talked about in this video or any of the other topics around digital transformation, go to the website and make sure that you sign up for one of my free 30-minute one-on-ones. As always, make sure that you're following me on Twitter or X at Chris Mutchler and reach out to me there and let me know how you are doing within your cloud transformation or digital transformation projects. I look forward to talking to you next time.